you have a prepaid call from an inmate at the California Institution for Women, Corona, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I would like to meet positive friends along the way and, you know, to create and establish productive friendships amongst us. And, you know, with my actions alone, then they could see that I have changed and I'm ready to society, then it will help me as a board leader or something. Because I want to help the youth. I want to help people like me. And I just want to share my story. I might not change the world, but I could change some lives. Okay, so what do you go by? Um, uh, I go by Magali, but my nickname was Morena. What's your nationality? I am Hispanic. Were you ever from any gangs, groups, organizations, or an associate? I was from 18th Street Gang. And where is that located? Um, in Los Angeles. South of Los Angeles. Can you uh, elaborate or take us back um, to the beginning to where how you got involved in the gang's lifestyle and, and, and how you grew up in your upbringing? I, I got involved in gangs and I met them in school. So I was getting bullied and in school and going back home, you know, was being abused physically, sexually, emotionally, and hanging around with them, I just decided to join a gang. Of course, I had to prove myself first to get jumped in, so I got jumped in by three girls for 18 seconds, and I was the age of 14, that's when I joined in the gang. My joining in the gang was more for power and control, to have control of certain things that I didn't have control at home or at school. Uh, at the age of 16, I was invited to a party by... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Someone was killed, and due to the fact that I was at the party with them, and I refused to cooperate with the law, so I was arrested, of course, about 21 years, and here I am for being loyal to the gang and loyal to the homies. So I thought then that I was doing the right thing. Okay, what is exactly for the audience, um, what exactly is the role of a female gang member? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, can you elaborate on what exactly is the role or position of a female gang member from your neighborhood? much today how I take a look at it is that the homeboys pretty much put the blame on us women. The homegirls are the ones that go down for the homeboys. The homegirls are the ones doing the time for the homeboys. The homegirls are the ones that are supposed to be down for whatever. And that's what it was then. And I didn't understand that until now that I'm doing my time and I'm doing it all alone. And the only ones here for me are just my family and positive friends that I have met along the way. Okay, what are you incarcerated for? I'm incarcerated for voluntary manslaughter and gang enhancement. Where are you currently incarcerated at? I got incarcerated um, from LA County. Um, I got incarcerated in Los Angeles. I was in Los Padrinos Juvenile Hall since I was 60 years old at that age, at the time of my crime. Um, when I turned 18, I went to Linwood um, County Jail for women, and at the age of 20, I was sent to prison with a 21-year sentence. I've been incarcerated for 12 years. Okay, I know the DA, in your case, has a certain narrative, right? So. In your own words, without any self-incrimination or incriminating others, 
Um, in your own words, can you explain your narrative? And do you believe that you got a fair trial and a fair sentence? Um, you know what? I do. I, I did because I should have told the truth. Um, I could have uh, really, uh, uh, brought some alleviation to, alleviation to the victim's family. And I didn't because at the time I was loyal to the gang and loyal to my homeboys. And um, so, yes, I got the fair sentence. Because it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot that today I will not be part of no um, illegal activities or no any criminal activities. Okay, during your incarceration, um, how did you, I mean, especially when you first went to prison, how did you feel about it? When I first came, well, when I first got incarcerated, I was kind of scared at first. And um, in juvenile hall, we used to fight a lot because, uh, you know, yeah, we were kids and at the time we were active in the game. So it was all about gang banging. When I went to county jail, it was totally different. But when I came to prison, it was about game banging. So I was fighting every day. And because of my case, since it's game related. Um, I had to earn my respect by fighting and being with the crowd, which means being with the same people as me. Uh, until 2017, it's when I started changing. Okay, um, can you um, elaborate on any type of groups that are formed in there and also were you involved in any type of group and also does these groups have any type of rules and regulations that they abide by? Can you elaborate on that? Yes, I was, um, I took several groups for well, many of them. Can I name a few? Yeah, sure. You can I name could, a few, um, but I, I'm I'm kind of um, pretty much um, going with groups that are like um, maybe uh, destructive groups or gang groups up in there as we speak right now. Um, yes, I was. I was. I was with, you know, well, people from 18th Street or that just rolling with the Hispanics and I came from Chowchilla prison, so... We were always in riots against, you know, the blacks. It was like more a racial thing and a gang thing. So I was with them for a while until I was sent to this prison, CIW, five years ago. Okay, will and you be... Where were... Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, will you be able to elaborate on what type of rules and regulations that your group that you were once involved in imposed on individuals that were in that group and other and maybe other groups? Well, none. There's no rules and regulations? So There's I'm, rules and regulations, but I didn't follow any. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Then, I mean, not, not today, I'm speaking about the past. So I didn't follow any because, I mean, I... Seeing the corruption level in the prison, it was hard for me to follow rules and regulations. Okay, what type of uh, things that you recall that starts these riots with other, maybe other uh, groups? In a negative way? Yeah, or, yeah, pretty much. Like, what, what was sparked it? Like, the men's prison, right? Like, you know, anything could spark a riot, like maybe you go in the wrong area uh, or you're in a, a debt with another race or something like that or this or you could spark a riot or or maybe individual does something wrong and that individual can get hit i know women's prisons are different but can you elaborate on some similarities there it was more so drug debt or a friend fighting a friend from another group and Everybody just jumping in. Um, sometimes um, the opposite race, bullying one of our own race, 
So that could spark up a racial riot too, or somebody stealing something from one of us. There was different reasons why a riot was created. Okay, what we have to say to the youngsters out here that's involved in gang activity or thinking about joining gangs? My message will be that when we're young, we just think we know it all. But just being part of a gang is going to have severe consequences. And our, vic our victims become our family. We become victims to the gang. We become victims to our own actions. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And our family are suffering for that. So my advice would be that their focus should be positive on going to school, bettering themselves, getting educated. I wish somebody would have took the time to tell me this. And being loyal to a gang or the homies, that's not being lo loyal. That's just being, you know, making the wrong decisions. And we need to learn how to love ourselves. Because the gang is there when we're out there doing illegal activities with them. But when everything goes down, the gang forgets about us. And we're just used. We're left behind. So that's my message. You have 60 seconds remaining. Yes, I, I love my family and my change started first with God. And I owe this to them. I owe this to my family because they have been through this for 12 years with me. And every accomplishment, every change, every positive thing I do is for them and for the memory of my father that died six years ago. And I'm going to continue my change always because I want to show, you know, the community that it's possible for us to change in here. It's possible for us to become better, no matter what we did in the past.